If you get this question correct, you'll get two minutes break. Five, five. Sorry. Let's see. One person gets one minute break. Five person get it, five minutes break. Ten, ten minutes. Twenty, twenty minutes. I will know if somebody copies. So what is the whole thing inside right now? So should I speak? Yes, sir. Okay. So when you look at from this side, it appears like that. Oh, oh, oh my god. Okay. My god, it's not dark. It's a cylinder. From the middle, another small cylinder comes out. Okay? The This is a string which is wrapped around a smaller cylinder which is fixed on the bigger cylinder. Are you Okay? So this is. How do you fix it up? I have a log, a wooden log. You removed this material from the wooden log. Then you left with this kind of structure, na? Yes. This line is cut off. Now it will feel... Okay, sir, but... So both of them... All two, let's put it in the middle, let's put it in the middle. Let's put it in the middle. हाँ बोला सिलेंडर ओनली सी टोटल मास इज़ गिवन एंड कंप्लीट रेडियस टू आर इज़ गिवन तो मोमेंट ऑफ़ नेचर इज़ एम इनटू टू आर स्क्वायर बाय टू ओके सिलेंडर ही है वो आर यू गेटिंग इट ओ सो यू डोंट नीड टू ऐड अप इच हाउस अम एक्चुअली या इट विल नॉट बी एम इनटू टू आर स्क्वायर बाय टू यू कैन से दैट I haven't taught radius of variation. कुछ नहीं होता यार सी radius of variation if सी अरे seriously if if radius of variation is k moment of inertia is m into k square कितना सिंपल so radius of variation of a ring is what r only for a disc it is r by root two because m into k square should be equal to moment of inertia getting it so, radius of variation is k, so moment of inertia is m into k square. Thanks, sir. Okay? Chalo. Moment of inertia about this, so radius of variation about this axis is given. Which is? Haan. Radius of variation is k about that axis. You need to find out, jo bhi hai, alpha a and what is force of friction? So Just write down the equation like this. That's all I want. So it's, it's not slipping. No slipping. No slipping. With the word string, you said something about string. <laughs> string is getting pulled. String is wrapped around here and it is pulled at an angle theta with the horizontal attack. What is it? Huh? Ah, if F is very large, but F is not that large. You will be able to get it. Can that thing slide on the floor? No. Can it slide on the floor? There is no slipping. There is no slipping. It is pure rolling. Rolling without slipping. So, roll backwards. You attempt it, na? If you assume rolling without slipping, the bottom must be at rest. Just write down the equations. Done. Draw the Feber diagram, represent forces, write down the torque equation, force equation. It's not simple. So you're, you're pulling a string, right? Like. Huh? With force F. Tension in the string is F. Oh, tension in the string is F. Are you pull string with F? So string will pull you with what force? Yes. F only. That is a tension. Fx is friction. 
You don't need this equation, the vertical direction, normal direction. Ah, it's correct. No one else. <laughs> mu n, why are you taking mu n as friction? It is not mu n. Friction need not be mu n. It is just sufficient for it to have to rolling. Mu is when sliding happens. It is rolling. Rolling friction will be applied. Ah, but who else? No one else. I'll write down. Check, compare both. So, so if I just change mu and friction, then it's okay. <laughs> So because then everything will remain the same. I didn't use my Down due to tension is down. Wait, no sir, I thought down due to friction was wrong. Down due to tension is wrong. Tension should be uh, because it has to go. What I'm saying is that at times you worry about how it is rotating, where the direction of friction and all that. What I am saying is, don't worry about that. You should be consistent. That's all. You can assume any direction. You can assume any direction of force or friction. But when you write down the equation, you should not equate force in this direction to mass and acceleration of that direction. Similarly, torque, clockwise torque, you should not equate to I of alpha of anti-clockwise. Are you getting what I am trying to say? You can assume any direction of friction, any direction of whatever you can, as long as you are maintaining consistency. because Torque equal to I alpha doesn't tell you that friction direction should be this and that. All it tells you that it should be consistent with applying the equation. Are you getting it? I so let's assume friction is this way. I don't know which way it is. So I'll assume any which way. There is the friction direction. If my assumption is wrong, friction magnitude will come out to be negative. Okay? So don't break your head on which direction the friction is. A friction area, that's all. So if I write net force along x direction is equal to mass and acceleration, I get F cos theta minus friction is equal to what? M into A cm. Vertical direction I will not write because unnecessary normal direction will come in play. Torque equation is what? Torque due to F is what? F into? Cos. F into R, simply F into R, because entire force is perpendicular to this distance. Right? For, to find the component of force, you have to use F cos theta. But in order to find torque, you have to write force into R. Ajay, by the way, if this is ACM, alright, then this is angular acceleration alpha. Why I should take angular acceleration alpha like this? No, sorry, it will be like that. It should be like this, alpha. Why should I take like that? The reason, only then this point can be at rest. Only then alpha into R this way and ACM that way. Getting it? Everywhere there should be consistency. So F into R, is torque in this way, but alpha is in opposite direction, so minus f into r. Getting it? Then plus friction into 2r. This is a total torque about the center of mass. Okay? This should be equal to ICM, which is m into k square times alpha. Okay? Right? So you can solve this and alpha is equal to A by R. This is also constraint equation, rolling without slipping. Alright? A by 2R. A is equal to alpha into 2R. 
side. Okay. Okay. So after the break, we will derive torque into I alpha. Then, then what we will have? We have angular momentum left, conservation of energy left. Then let's see. We can start angular momentum probably. All right. So let us talk about the derivation of torque equal to I alpha. Okay. We'll take a simpler case. Okay, and then uh, we'll try to extend it to a generic case. Suppose this is the axis of rotation; it spins. Okay, it is a fixed axis of rotation. I am going to prove torque to I alpha for the fixed axis. Okay. Suppose angular acceleration is alpha. All right. If angular acceleration is alpha, this perpendicular distance of the point mass m1 is let's say is r1. For let's say m2, the perpendicular distance is <coughs> r2. Okay. <coughs> so the acceleration of m1 is what alpha into R1 acceleration of M2 is alpha. alpha R2. Okay. So acceleration are in opposite directions. Are you getting it? That is understood. Acceleration is is in opposite direction. We will talk about it later on. But right now the net force on M1. Let's say that is F1. Will it be equal to m alpha R1? Is this the net force? Mass and acceleration? Huh? M1 alpha. Ah, chill. Like M1. Is this the correct thing? There's something wrong here. Tell me what it is. So you you're neglecting all the force. Wait, no. I am taking acceleration as alpha R1. Is that the only acceleration? There will be centripetal acceleration also. It is moving in a circle, right? So <coughs> centripetal acceleration will be omega square into r1. So there will be centripetal force as well to provide centripetal acceleration. Centripetal force will be this is what tangential force. There will be centripetal force F C. Which is m1 omega square r1? Yes or no? Two forces are there: tangential and centripetal. But the good thing is that centripetal force passes through the axis; it touches the axis. So the torque because of this force will be zero. So torque will be only because of this tangential force. Is it clear? Okay. So torque because of the force f1. Is what torque because of only this force, which is how much? Oh, Perpendicular yeah. distance is R1. Yeah. So torque is what? M alpha. M alpha. This is M1 alpha R1 into R1. So this is what M1 R1 square alpha. And then you sum that for the. Yes or no? Torque on this M2, although the acceleration is in opposite direction, the torque will be in the same direction because both are same sense of rotation. So, if you add up all the torques, you get a total torque. Are you getting it? This is the total torque, which will be equal to summation of M I R I square. Into alpha. Okay. This will be equal to summation of m i r square is what moment of inertia about that axis. So i into alpha. And what is the summation of all the torques? This is this will be equal to sum of all external plus the internal torques. Now. 
Summation of all internal torques will be zero. Why? Sum of all forces will be zero. ये तो भाई Newton third law है. Newton ने बोला. Summation of all torques you have extended it from your side. When net force is zero, is it necessary that net torque will be zero? No. So why net torque is zero? Why net internal torque will be zero? So because it will. Uh, one will like let's say there's a force between two particles. One will generate a torque in one direction. The other will generate it in the opposite direction. Prove it mathematically. Kar mathematics to kya? Prove that sum of all internal torque will be zero. Just take two masses, okay? Here are two mass. Internal force, right? Internal forces will be acting towards each other, equal and opposite. If one is F, other will be minus F. You need to prove that torque about this point will be zero. Take that as origin. This is R1, that is R2. Prove it. Sum of all torque will be zero. Go on. Got it? There you go. Torque because of this force is R2 cross F. Because of that force, it is R1 cross minus F. Yes or no? So if you add these two, you get total torque is equal to R2 minus R1 cross F. R2 minus R1 is what? A vector which is connecting these two points, right? And force is parallel to that R2 minus R1. So cross product will be zero. Right? So if you can have pairs of all the internal forces two at a time, they'll cancel away. So that is when net internal torque will be zero. So from there it comes out that net external torque to a rigid body will be equal to I into alpha. Of the fixed axis. Okay. So why is it zero? What is zero? I you you are not there in vectors. You have not seen the videos. Do you know how to subtract the vectors? Explain again. R two is this. R one is this. Where is R two minus R one? Tell. Nee rega tu nee video. Or while having your dinner or lunch, you watch the video. Copy pen, you should have it, make the notes, treat as if it is in a class. Okay. R2 minus R1 will be this vector or not? The triangle law. Huh? Ah, sorry. R2 plus this vector x should be equal to R1. R2 plus x is R1. This is the x will be equal to R1 minus R2. This way. But anyways, whatever way it is, either it will make zero angle or 180 degree. Both ways, the cross product will be zero with f. Fine. So sum of all internal torques will be zero. So net external torque will go I alpha about the fixed axis. All right. And there is a proof of the center mass axis also, but then it will become very involved. This formula torque is equal to I C M into alpha. This is also true, but torque you have to take here about the center mass axis. All right. I'll just give you a basic of basic logic or let's say overall logic of it. If you are using any other axis other than center of mass axis, okay, other than center of mass axis, if you use and there is no fixed axis, okay, then there will be a pseudo force. There will be a pseudo force which is going to act about the center of mass. See, this derivation assumes that the this axis is fixed. Right? 
So what you will do, you will stand on this axis and look at the entire <coughs> rotation. Fine. When you look at the entire rotation, if it is fixed, no problem. But if this axis has an acceleration, you will have to apply the pseudo force. And that pseudo force point of application is center of mass. So then you have to use torque due to the pseudo force as well over here. But if your axis passes through the center of mass, then torque because of that pseudo force will be zero. Okay? And other than that, there is a proper derivation of all that. Okay, but if you keep on doing that, 15 20 minutes will be gone and we we'll lose all the track of it. It is not going to be used anywhere. Okay, just remember these two equations. You can use one about fixed axis, other about the center mass axis. So if there is a fixed axis, it is easiest to use. Center mass axis is safest to use because center mass axis always valid. Fixed axis you may or may not find. Any doubt? Wait out. What out? I say, I say. I have five minutes for the one. Sir. Uh, so for the derivation of that um, the torque internally is zero. We said that like the two masses, one with force f and minus f, they like cancel each other out, right? Hmm. But what if like we have more mass on this side of the axis than this? So we have like more particles here than here. Won't that affect the internal torque? See, more particles here and there doesn't matter actually because uh, I am this point doesn't assume that both the particles will be both the particles can be on the right hand side of this point. It doesn't matter. So if you have like ten things with force minus f and five with force f, it cannot happen. It cannot. All the internal forces should add up to zero. Does you agree? So how can it be happen? Okay. okay. If somebody is applying F on that minus F will be applied. That is a Newton third law itself. So there will always be a pair. Okay. Any other doubt? No other doubt. So when you using this ICON. I have center of mass. Hmm. So you said that you have to apply something extra, some pseudo force or something. If you are using about center of mass, then you don't need to worry about torque into pseudo force. No need to worry. For the force fixed axis. Fixed axis, anyway, you don't need to worry about anything. Because you are standing on the fixed axis and looking at everything. But when you are using about center of mass, you are standing on center of mass axis. Even though center of mass accelerates, torque due to the pseudo force will be zero. So that pseudo force torque will not come in the equation if you are using torque about center of mass is equal to ICM alpha. But if you are using about some other axis which is neither fixed nor passing through center of mass then you can't use this formula. So basically this formula you can use only about fixed axis and about center of mass. Okay? Let's not debate on it too much. Just take it like, like a thumb rule. Okay? Assume it to be like the rule which you should follow. Okay. Okay. Keep your life simpler. Many of the students don't even know. By the time they come in class 12, they're about to pass out also, nobody tells them that you can use torque into alpha only about two axes. Okay. A teacher from came, I interviewed, he also did not. <laughs> How? 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 Yeah, I mean, you grow old doesn't mean that you know everything. Okay. Even if like from I also don't don't know everything. Like if you give me a question, probably I may not be able to solve then and there. Okay. Because the mechanics is vast, and it is not about how much questions you complete. It is about then and there if you're able to think. Still, I have a couple of questions from. Some J advanced batch, there is a question which still for it has been a month now, we are not able to solve it. And it is from kinematics. It sounds so simple. What is it saying? I'll give you you please attempt it at home. I keep on thinking about that. Like while teaching you also I might be thinking about this problem. 
Okay. So this is a icy river, frictionless. Like it's explosive. Icy river, icy water. Oh, okay. it's frozen. Glacier area, you mean? Wait, is it frozen? Yeah. Frozen. Icy river, kya hota hai? Like a river with ice in it. <laughs> oh, Achha, nahi, frozen, frozen. This is frictionless, no friction. Mu is equal to zero. Okay. Here, coefficient of friction is mu on the surface. Okay. All right. Here is param standing. All right. He has to cross the river. At the shortest time possible. So you smell slow. What? You yeah. smell slow. The answer nikal. As a bande bande. You have to find out the shortest time it will take to go to the other side. Are you getting it? Now it he can't start from here. Reason? Frictionless, na? He will not be able to accelerate. He will stand there only. He can't just run. Are you getting it? So he has to start from slightly behind. And the moment he is slightly behind, he is taking time to reach the... So you, there is some optical dis optimum distance, but if you assume that you go in a straight path, you will get the wrong answer. There should be a reason, logic and answer. Final answer I will tell you. Final answer. Sir, so, so no, this question before, sir. Okay. Have you seen that video where 3 to 1 bro? No, no, no. He's done this. No, no, no. They, they see, no, yeah, because it, it, it won't go straight. Like, so It'll be like that. Smells low. Yeah, yeah smells low. Yeah, smell 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 low. Kuch bhi logic mat do. Please copy down the answer. It's not that straightforward. I think it came in some in, um, physics Olympiad somewhere. Please write down. If you think it is simple, two step, you are wrong. So why won't it be in a straight line? Even I am wondering right now. So we go I, if, you, if, you, <laughs> if you assume it to be a straight line, the answer comes out to be 2 under root L by mu g. Which is actually more than this. So walking in a straight line is not even possible. So, I mean that is a little strange. So I am. Then I started to uh, do some research. Then I found out that when a runner is running, he is not putting his. I mean, it's not a wheel that is rolling. So he is putting his feet like this. So there will be some angle at which he will push the ground. Right. So. Maybe that is the reason why the uh, acceleration will not be equal to mu g all the time. So, maybe you have to go a little bit in detail, but just a little bit. Wait, sir, but he is moving at constant velocity. Constant velocity is Constant velocity is not possible. Constant velocity only in the icy river. Here, he is moving because of friction. Sir, how much can you accelerate with? Huh? Like we need how much, how fast he can accelerate, right? Actually, acceleration is friction force mu mg divided by mass mu g is the acceleration. That is straightforward, but that itself is wrong actually. No, only external force on the person is friction. Who, what, what else external force is horizontal direction? No, but if he himself is running. Wait, so, so but then, then what do you mean by he himself? Is how running? can I walk yeah, at different how speeds? If the friction, what? sir, how can I walk at different speeds if friction is always the same? Friction is acceleration, speed is velocity. What are you talking about? How can I accelerate at different acceleration? You can accelerate, now you don't need to... If static, static friction can vary from zero to maximum friction. You are not skidding while running, right? Okay, leave it. I should not have brought this up. Oh, you're going to solve it. Okay.